Welcome to the 1934 classic, March of the Wooden Soldiers, a film that promises a roller coaster of emotions. No need for fancy words or elaborate descriptions. Here, it's a straightforward tale with a mix of funny, shocking, and sad moments. Starring classic Hollywood actors that'll make you smile, you might find yourself asking, who was your favorite? These legendary figures bring charm and humor to a simple yet captivating storyline. As the plot unfolds, you'll discover hilarious antics, surprising twists, and touching moments that'll keep you glued to your seat. So, what classic Hollywood actor stole the show for you? We won't spoil the fun, but one thing's for sure March of the Wooden Soldiers is more than just entertainment. It's an experience that lingers, leaving you with memories to cherish. Speaking of memories, what's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this film? We'd love to hear your stories and thoughts in the comments below. Share your laughter, surprises, and maybe even a tear or two. Get ready for a journey through classic cinema where simplicity meets brilliance. Keep watching for more funny, shocking, and sad facts. And remember, your stories matter. In 1934, a captivating cinematic masterpiece emerged, drawing audiences into a bygone era with its timeless charm and whimsical allure. Picture yourself transported to a world where the movie takes center stage, inviting viewers into a realm of enchantment and laughter. As the opening credits roll, you find yourself immersed in the whimsical world crafted by the filmmakers of the 1930s. This black and white gem, directed by Gus Maines and Charlie Rogers, is a classic that has stood the test of time, leaving an indelible mark on the annals of cinematic history. Set against the backdrop of the Great Depression, the film not only provided an escape for audiences facing economic hardships, but also served as a testament to the resilience of the human spirit during challenging times. It isn't merely a film, it's a cultural artifact that mirrors the zeitgeist of its era, capturing the essence of a society seeking solace and joy. The story unfolds in Toyland, a whimsical land inhabited by Mother Goose characters, led by the bumbling but lovable Stanny Dumb and Ollie D. The duo embarks on a hilarious and heartwarming adventure, navigating through a series of comical mishaps and misunderstandings. What sets this cinematic gem apart is its ability to resonate with audiences across generations. The movie's significance lies not only in its entertainment value, but also in its portrayal of enduring themes such as friendship, bravery, and the triumph of good over evil. The iconic Laurel and Hardy duo brings a unique charm to the screen, creating an endearing legacy that continues to captivate audiences to this day. In a world filled with complexities, it stands out as a simple yet intricate piece of cinematic artistry. Its enduring appeal lies in its ability to transport viewers to a simpler time, where laughter reigned supreme and imagination knew no bounds. As you delve into the world of Toyland, accompanied by wooden soldiers, mischievous mice, and beloved characters from Mother Goose Tales, you'll find yourself immersed in a cinematic experience that transcends time. It isn't just a movie, it's a journey back to the magic and innocence of a bygone era. So, join Stanny Dumb and Ollie B on this timeless adventure where laughter knows no age and the magic of Toyland lives on. It's more than a film, it's a cherished piece of cinematic history woven into the fabric of cultural memory and the movie March of the Wooden Soldiers faced copyright issues for years. Home video companies distributed it, mistakenly assuming it was public domain due to a missing copyright notice on reissue prints. However, the original prints had the notice, and the copyright was properly renewed in 1962. The March of the Wooden Soldiers scene featured stop-motion animation by Roy Seawright and Art Lloyd. Using 101-foot-high wooden toy soldiers, they meticulously posed and shot each frame. Eleven of these survive today, with one sold at auction in 2020 for 14520 Laurel and Hardy historian Randy Scretvet owns another and occasionally loans it for exhibits. Filming caused a rift between Stan Laurel and Hal Roach. Roach's plot treatment was rejected by Laurel for straying from their characters. Laurel also wanted Technicolor, but Roach lacked the budget. Roach claimed later that the film lost money, which wasn't the case. At the outset of the film, uncredited appearances by members of the R Gang crew depict school children. Notably, a costumed monkey in the production bears a striking resemblance to Mickey Mouse. Walt Disney, a close friend of Hal Roach and a Laurel and Hardy enthusiast, later featured comedians impersonating the iconic duo in his 1961 film, Babes in Toyland. 
The character wigs of Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy faithfully mirror their usual on-screen hairstyles Hardy with a page boy cut resembling a bowl and Laurel sporting a prominent cowlick. The movie March of the Wooden Soldiers faced copyright issues due to a missing notice on reissue prints, leading to mistaken assumptions of public domain status. Despite the rift between Stan Laurel and Hal Roach during filming, the surviving scenes featuring stop-motion animation by Roy Seawright and Art Lloyd stand as a testament to their meticulous work with 101-foot-high wooden toy soldiers. Notably, 11 such scenes exist today, with one fetching 14520 at auction in 2020, while another is in the possession of Laurel and Hardy historian Randy Scretvet, occasionally loaned for exhibits. Roach's rejected plot treatment and Laurel's desire for Technicolor highlight the tensions during production, with Roach later falsely claiming the film incurred losses. In summary, March of the Wooden Soldiers includes uncredited our gang appearances, a Mickey Mouse-like monkey, and faithful character wig representations, alongside its well-documented copyright challenges and the intricate stop-motion animation work. This concise overview provides insight into various aspects of the film's production and reception, revealing a blend of technical craftsmanship and behind-the-scenes conflicts. Felix Knight, who portrayed Tom Tom, took his on-screen romance off-screen, eloping with co-star Alice Moore in Yuma, Arizona, on October 17, 1935. The Pee-wees Stan interacts with were actual toys from the early 19s. Unlike the film's portrayal, players aim to strike them straight up, not behind the striker competing for the longest hit. A lawsuit unfolded when an extra named John Wood accused Stan Laurel and his stunt double, Han Kinsey, of causing back injuries. Wood claimed 4,500 in damages, but the case was settled out of court. In the realm of March of the Wooden Soldiers, real-life drama unfolded, with actors eloping, vintage toys taking center stage, and on-set injuries leading to legal battles. These behind-the-scenes events add layers to the movie's history, providing a glimpse into the personal lives and challenges faced by those involved in its production. Framed photographs in the Three Little Pigs house depict a plate of sausages as mother and a football as father. The set welcomed frequent visits from our gang kids, some of whom appeared as unbilled Toyland schoolchildren. During filming, a symphony of cast injuries unfolded. Stan Laurel fell off a platform, tearing ligaments in his right leg. Henry Brandon suffered injuries in a bar fight at the brass rail. Assistant director Gordon Douglas slid 15 feet from the top of the old woman's shoe, tearing ligaments in his left leg. Cupi Morgan, portraying old King Cole, laughed continuously, rupturing stomach muscles after two days. Oliver Hardy underwent tonsil removal at St. Vincent's Hospital the day after filming concluded, while Hal Roach developed appendicitis. These backstage incidents provide a raw glimpse into the challenges faced by the cast and crew during production, showcasing the physical toll taken in bringing the film to life. The set, frequented by our gang kids, witnessed not only the creation of iconic scenes, but also the real-life struggles and injuries of those involved. Stan Laurel's desire for Technicolor in the 1934 movie March of the Wooden Soldiers led to a clash with producer Hal Roach, who balked at the experimental and costly process. This intensified the rift between them, with Roach refusing to produce a feature in full three-strip Technicolor. Instead, the film, known for its fantasy elements, fabulous costumes and sets, was shot in black and white. The first full Technicolor film, Becky Sharp, emerged a year later, but Roach stuck to monochrome. The subsequent colorization of March of the Wooden Soldiers, often broadcast during Christmas, contrasts with Turner Classic Movies, which typically airs the original black and white version. In a peculiar scene, when Pete Gordon, portraying the cat with the fiddle, takes a hit in the head by a brickbat, he mimics the comedic style of Oliver Hardy and likely James Finlayson. The film's slapstick humor is embodied in this subtle nod to Laurel and Hardy's iconic mannerisms. Additionally, during a morning scene, rubber headpieces were crafted for the three pigs, each with a distinct sad face. However, their weight and limited mobility necessitated a second, more practical headpiece for each pig. These behind-the-scenes details shed light on the creative choices and challenges faced during the production of March of the Wooden Soldiers, a film marked by the tension between Laurel's vision for Technicolor and Roach's budgetary constraints. The clash of comedic styles and the pragmatic solutions to technical issues add layers to the film's history, enriching the narrative of this classic comedy.